In the last episode of History Traveler, we started talking about the Battle of Verdun, which was one of the most nightmarish, horrific battles during the First World War. Uh, the Battle of Verdun, which the Germans had called Operation Judgment, kicked off on February 21st with one of the most massive, unreal artillery barrages from the Germans that you can possibly imagine. Uh, on the area around Verdun, which was a fortress city. There was a ring of forts uh, that was around Verdun that had originally gone up uh, right after the Franco-Prussian War and then had been improved in the years since. And as the German army was making its way to the south towards the uh, objective of Verdun, well, the, the grand prize, the, the big fish of all of the forts that would be at the very tip of the spear was this one right here, Fort Duamont. As I just mentioned, uh, in the ring of forts around Fortress Verdun, Fort Duamont was the granddaddy of them all. I know that from what we're seeing right now, it looks like it's just rolling hills, uh, but beneath that green grass is the largest fort in the Verdun sector. Uh, construction started on this fort in 1885. Uh, it was originally a stone fort. And then as technology improved and artillery got bigger and more lethal, well, they ended up upgrading this fort and all of the other forts in the Verdun area uh, to have concrete fortifications. Uh, as a matter of fact, the, there was a steel reinforced concrete roof that got added to Fort Duamont that was 13 yards thick and resting on a sand cushion because obviously they wanted to protect from any of these super heavy artillery rounds that would potentially uh, be hitting it. And uh, again, when the Germans are moving to the south uh, with Crown Prince Wilhelm and his fifth army, uh, Fort Duamont is gonna be the first one uh, of the forts that's gonna be right in the way. All right, making our way through what was the main entrance to Fort Duamont. And uh, one thing that I want to point out here, um, if you look, I talked about how Duamont starts off as a stone fort and gets converted to a concrete fort. You can see that transition right here. And something else that is interesting about these forts is that all along you'll notice these red lines uh, that was an indication that that was the concrete portion and if a soldier looked over and saw a red line during an enemy bombardment well that was an indication that he was in a safe zone yeah but here's the entryway to Duamont now obviously as with any fort Fort Duamont is all about protection. So if you look behind me, you can see these gun ports here. The idea with Duamont is to have big heavy guns that can reach out a long distance and also have these interlocking fields of fire all around the fort so that no enemy troops can possibly uh, get near it and penetrate these defenses. Uh, all right, we're gonna go up top and uh, take a look at where some of the big guns from Fort Duamont were located.
All right, moving up here on the right side of the fort. Now well, we get to the big gun. Uh, this is a 155 millimeter gun, uh, which is on a retractable turret so that it can go down into the fort and keep it safe from enemy artillery fire. And 155 millimeters, that, that's, a pretty, that's a pretty good size round. Uh, and on the 25th of February, when Duamont uh, undergoes uh, an, an assault from German infantry, uh, the 155 millimeter gun had a team operating it, and it was firing uh, intermittently. Uh, we'll get to that here in just a little bit. Also, if you come to Duamont and you see this other uh, helmet looking thing, poking up. Uh, this is not a gun turret. Uh, this is an observation turret. So you can see those little slits in there. The, uh, the people who would be in the observation turret would be watching where the, the rounds from the 155 millimeter gun were hitting and, uh, and then reporting, you know, if they needed to make any corrections. Walking around the top of the sport and seeing like all of these machine gun turrets and heavy artillery positions and casemates and everything, it, it's hard to imagine how any enemy assaulting this position could possibly be successful. Uh, but there, there is a way, uh, a, a really good way to um, take a position like this is to completely strip it down of most of its armaments and all of its personnel. Uh, that's exactly what happened here prior to the Battle of Verdun. Uh, French high command had kind of lost faith in the forts, especially after like what happened at Liège where German heavy artillery completely bombarded those forts and overran them. So they, they were kind of, forts were kind of falling out of favor uh, with German high command. So they had stripped a lot of the guns out of the forts around Verdun and had sent them to the front lines. And a lot of the personnel had been taken away from Fort Duamont and there was only like 55 or 56 really older guys who were manning this position. Now with Fort Duamont being at the tip of the spear for this ring of forts, at least from where the Germans were advancing from, the, this fort got pounded with tens of thousands of shells during the Battle of Verdun. Uh, and, and you can see the evidence. I mean, it, it is just pockmarked with shell craters all over the place. Uh, and then seeing like the size of this shell crater, you can see just how deep the defenses were here at Duamont. Okay, I want to move up here now. Uh, up here is where the 75 millimeter gun was positioned here at the point of Fort Duamont. And it was taken out of action pretty early in the game. Uh, one of the German heavy artillery uh, hit it. I think it was a 420 millimeter that, that hit it and uh, and knocked it out and the the trees are kind of obscuring things for us right now but there's an open field right up ahead of us that serves present day as a firing range for the French military and and this is going to be the primary axis of advance for the Germans as they are making their assault on Fort Duamont. Uh, it's going to be the, the 24th Brandenburgers that we're going to be uh, hitting this spot first. And the story that is associated with how they took this fort is pretty wild. All right, I'm going to move down a little bit lower now.
All right, I've moved now down into the dry moat that is surrounding Fort Dumont. So if you look back here, you can see it's like this giant trench that goes all along the outer perimeter. And the, the idea of this part of the fortifications is to make this a kill zone. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So right up there is where we just were with the 155 millimeter gun. And down here in the dry moat, well, you've got this, this low area. Uh, it was going to have just all kinds of barbed wire entanglements and uh, chevaux de free and you know all kinds of obstacles to basically try and prevent any uh, you know enemy infantry uh, from getting up to the fort um, now also and there's there's going to be barbed wire up there as well uh, I should point out also here on the perimeter you have these concrete positions that are just loaded up with heavy weaponry. So there are machine guns in there. Uh, there was this rotating, like a Gatling, guy, Gatling gun uh, style cannon. So anybody who comes in trying to get through here is going to get chewed up by the guys in here. And anybody trying to come over right here is going to get chewed up by the guy right there. So, so this was a nightmare scenario for anyone trying to attack this fort. Unless there's hardly anybody in there. So in the assault on Fort Duamont, you've got, the, the, again, the 24th Brandenburg Regiment that is approaching the fort. And among them, there's a group of about 10 pioneers uh, that are led by a guy named Sergeant Kuntz. And it, this is like a small team that they've all kind of broken up and they're all, you know, kind of penetrating the lines here. And as they topped this, uh, this mound here and came down into the dry moat, it had to feel like they were walking into the cave of a dragon uh, just not sure what was getting ready to happen but they get down here into the dry moat and to their surprise nothing happens <laughs> in the village of Duamont there was a French machine gun team that was up in the church steeple uh, they saw them coming over but they thought that it was a group of French territorials who had been out scouting were coming back. So Kuntz and his men just enter in here and nothing happens. Now, as these guys are trying to figure out what to do next, uh, keep in mind that there is still German artillery that is falling on this position. So uh, they're not only in danger from being shot and killed by the French defenders, uh, they're also at risk from being atomized by their own artillery. Uh, now, there was, uh, again, a lot of damage that was done to this fort. You can see a big crater right here. And as Kuntz and his men are looking around, they find a spot in one of the casemates, and I'm not exactly sure where it is, uh, but they find a spot in one of the casemates that's been damaged, and there's a hole that they can get access into the inside of the fort. Now, these guys are still shocked that they're not dead. So Kuntz, he decides that he's gonna just go in. The rest of the guys think it's a trap, and they say that they're not gonna do it. So Sergeant Kuntz ends up going in and is going to basically take down this entire fort by himself. Now, what Kuntz and his men didn't know is that this, this fort had largely been stripped down. I mean, who would think that the strongest and most powerful fort in this defense network uh, would have been nearly stripped of all of its armaments and men? So Kuntz doesn't know that though. So he, it's a pretty brave move to, to go into this monster uh, by himself. He's almost kind of like, I've heard him called the, the Sergeant York of the German army. 
Uh, all right, we're going to go take a, a quick look inside. Uh, I'm here kind of late in the day, so it, the whole structure is going to be closing soon. Uh, but we're going to get in there and see what we can. We just got into the fort here and holy smokes, uh, this thing is some kind of impressive. And we've got birds flying in here as well. Um, all right, so I'm, I'm just gonna show uh, a few highlights. This is not gonna be like a full on in-depth tour of the fort. Man, I have made that bird angry. Um, anyway, we're, we're gonna show just a, a few highlights and then uh, get over to where the, the Germans infiltrated Fort Duamont. All right, so it's probably obvious the room that we're entering in right now. This is one of the barracks rooms here at the fort. You can see that they have some beds all lined up here. Uh, now, that looks like a, a nice, maybe a queen size or king size bed. Uh, it's actually a double bed. So there would be two people on top and then two people on bottom. And uh, earlier I talked about how at Verdun, there was a ring of forts all around the city. And here on this map, they, they really show that well. So here we are up here at Fort Duamont. Uh, there's Fort Vaux. We'll be going to that one later because there's some pretty major things that happen at that fort. And then there's just this whole ring of large forts and then intermediate fortifications and um, strong points and everything all around the city, all situated on the high ground. Fort Regret, that's another one that I think we're gonna be going to on this trip. And then, again, here's the floor plan for Duamont itself, and we're right there in the middle. Hey, take a look at this. Looks like uh, the fort is still being inhabited even today. Here they have a few examples of some of the shells that were being fired at the fort here. Uh, so it looks like we have a 280 millimeter gas shell and a 220. Um, I'm not sure what this one is on the left. But th these are examples of the kinds of shells that were being fired at the fort. And this wasn't even close to being the largest that the Germans were hurling at the French during the Battle of Verdun. All right, continuing our way through the fort. Uh, so I've got a little piece of paper that gives me a little bit of a guide as to some of the things that, that we're seeing that's helping out. Uh, so this part has been closed off at the end, but you'll notice this cobbled roadway. Uh, this is the part of the fort uh, where they would transport ammunition. So, so this was a, uh, a vital artery uh, here at Fort Duamont. Now you can't do a proper home tour without doing uh, a little bit of a tour of the restroom facilities. So here is the latrine in Fort Duamont. Now I do need to be clear on something. This is not the original. Uh, this is the 1917 remodel because the original latrine uh, was destroyed during the bombardments in 1916. All right, we're continuing to make our way through the fort here, and we're getting ready to access the part where the 155 millimeter gun was located. And this is the part of Duelmont that the Germans accessed when they were attacking this fort. So as we make our way through here, we can see the part of the fort that Kuntz was able to make his way into. And then continuing on down this corridor, 
Now we come around this bend. Uh, there are a couple of steel doors that just strangely enough were open uh, while the battle was going on. And in here, manning the 155 millimeter gun was this crew of French soldiers. And uh, Kuntz comes in here and says, uh, hand a hawk, uh, hands up, and these guys surrendered. And that pretty much sealed the fate of this fort. While we're in here, I'll show a few more things with this 155 millimeter gun. So here's a schematic of what the turret looks like and how it operates. Um, so if we look over here, well, this is a replacement barrel that kind of gives you an idea of the size of the gun that was in this turret. And then this thing would, I mean, it is huge. I mean, standing here, I don't know if you can really see it on camera, just the, the size of this thing or get an idea of how big it is. Um, but anyway, it operates, you know, by going up and down uh, to protect the gun. Um, so that is going to take quite a few people to operate. Uh, so you would have this crank here that would elevate and depress the turret and uh, helping those guys out. Well, you would have these big counterweights on either side that would help with raising and lowering the turret. I think I read that it took like two minutes to elevate and two minutes to come back down. So if we go up these steps here, try not to slip and hurt ourselves. It's kind of damp in this fort. So right in here is where the loading team would have worked. And then we can't go in because obviously you can see the bars, but the fire team would operate there on the third level. Whoa, there was a bird or a bat. Scared me to death. They have these panels scattered throughout the fort that depict different things uh, about this complex. So this one is showing the capture of Fort Duamont by the 24th Regiment of uh, Brandenburgers on uh, the 25th of February. And uh, they also have some things that you can read, but it's all in French and I have no signal down here to translate. Uh, I'll tell you one thing, something that is pretty mind-blowing. I, I guess if you lived here and were, you know, garrisoned here, you would get used to it, but there are so many twists and turns. Uh, seems like a guy would get lost pretty easy in here. All right, we're kind of in that main artery again. And then, yeah, here's a picture uh, showing the German occupation of Fort Duamont. All right, before we go, here's a little memorial that they have for uh, Charles de Gaulle, who was taken prisoner uh, defending the village of Duamont. And unfortunately, run out of time, and uh, yeah, they're closing up and they're, they're running me out. Well, unfortunately, I got here a little late in the day and uh, they just closed up and, and literally kicked me out. Uh, but anyway, when, when the Germans took Fort Duamont, man, there, that was a huge deal. There were celebrations all throughout Germany. It was in the papers. Uh, there were church bells that were ringing in celebration uh, because the, the mightiest fort in the, the Verdun sector had fallen without a single shot being fired. Uh, there was only one kind of casualty that was registered. Uh, one of Kuntz's men slipped and fell and scraped his knee. Uh, now, the Germans would hold this place uh, all the way up until October 
uh, when the French would take it back. Most of the Germans who fought in Verdun over that 300 day battle staged up here at Duomont first before being fed right into this meat grinder. But anyway, that was a little bit here at Fort Duomont. <laughs>